Hey guys, welcome back. Jeb Smith here. Today I have a special guest, Jeremy Knight, who is a high-level performing uh, agent in Austin, Texas, um, fellow YouTuber as well. Uh, I have provided his uh, link in the description below. So if you're looking to, to make any transitions to Texas, just want to know what's happening in Texas real estate, Austin, Texas real estate, check him out. Uh, puts out a lot of good content out there. Um, Jeremy, yeah. Welcome to the show, man. Hey, I appreciate you having me. It's uh, it's an honor to, to be with you today and uh, to chat with you about what's going on in this crazy Austin, crazy Texas market. Yeah. So, I mean, that that's that's the reason to have you on, right? I mean, there's a lot of people moving out of California. In fact, if you if you just if you're on YouTube at, at all, um, you, you see all of these, you know, these big YouTubers um, and, and even people that aren't necessarily big YouTubers, the the Elon Musk of the world. Right. Yep. Titling videos saying leaving California. Um, and when they see leaving California, a lot of the times they're headed to Texas, right? I mean, if you search the, the national association of realtors, they have this little box on their website where you can say, you know, where are people in California going to? And, and the number one place that people, when they leave California are headed is is Texas. Yep. Um, so let's talk about Texas, right? I mean, I, I think, you know, me being from North Carolina, originally coming to California, I have an idea of what life is out, you know, is like outside of California. A lot of people don't, right? A lot of people have been in California their entire lives. And, you know, a lot of them move to to, to Texas because they think, you know, low income tax, right? Um, real estate is less expensive than it is, say, here in California or even a lot of places across the United States, right? There's, it's not just California. People are moving from New York and, and, and these areas where they've, they've had a lot of appreciation. Um, politics have played a part in, in why they think they, they need to exit the state for whatever reason. So what are you seeing, right? What are you seeing when people are, are leaving say these States and they come in, what are maybe the misconceptions? What are, you know, just, just kind of talk and, and let's see where it goes. Yeah. So, well, again, thanks for having me. Um, yeah. So on my channel, we talk about a lot of these topics, uh, over and over, um, you know, as far as the politics go, you know, not, not a lot of realtors like to talk politics. Uh, I don't necessarily talk politics on my channel, but really I've just did a video talking about the politics of why people are leaving. So, I mean, there's a handful of reasons people are leaving, you know, not only California, but Seattle, but I'd say, you know, we work, uh, this year alone, we'll probably close 120-ish deals with um, reloads out of pretty much California, Seattle, not necessarily New York. I get a lot of calls from New York. just feels like New Yorkers go to Florida instead. Right. Not so, sure. um, yeah, in fact, if you look at that pie chart of where people are moving to, a lot of the West Coasters are moving to um, Texas. Um, they're moving to Utah and then they're moving out towards uh, Florida. So um, I think, so the misconceptions that I hear, and this is something we talk about consistently is that, Oh, Texas is cheap. Right. You know, there's no income tax, so it's cheap. I'm going to sell my house here or I'm renting here in California and I can't afford to buy a $500,000 house there, but I can buy a $500,000 house in in Austin or in, in Dallas or wherever. And so that's going to make my life so much better. And I think that's a misconception for a lot of people because yes, if you look on a scale of San Francisco, LA, San Diego, a lot of the, you know, Bay areas or, you know, ocean areas, you know, yeah, property values are a lot higher there. Um, it, but if you go to Austin, Austin's super expensive. So I'm in one of the most expensive markets. Um, most people come say, Hey, I want to buy a $350,000 house. It's not that I laugh at them, but (laughs) the reality is trying to buy a $350,000 house is the most competitive market in probably the entire US, that that price range. Um, Because all these investors are coming out here because of people like Elon, because of all the big tech that's moving out here. So investors have been out here for really the last eight months, buying up everything they can. And they probably make up, um, I saw a national statistic, 20% of the actual purchasers buying right now. I would say in Texas, it's probably, that's probably fairly accurate in Austin. It's probably about 20 to 25% wow. of investors. I mean, I get, um, actually on my channel kind of stopped. I told investors to stop calling me, uh, because what's under 350 is so hard to find. And now what's happening is if you're, if your budget is 500,000, right? Like that's the, your max budget, you are having to write an 
you're having to find a home in the 350 price point wow. and riding $150,000 over to make that a, a reality. Um, and that's that's gone on. Really, it was it was very busy through the pandemic. I, believe it or not, 2021 was my absolute busiest year on record. And then 2021 hit in January, and we went from doing $75,000 over list price on offers to $150,000, $180,000. Uh, I saw a $950,000 home sell for almost $1.3 million. Wow. So yeah. it's it's crazy. And so I think that's the misconception. People hear, like, and the, the, I always chuckle when people tell me, oh, I've lived in the Seattle market. And so I understand how busy the Seattle market the one thing you can't do is compare Texas to, or especially Austin to anything else. Even Dallas is busy. It's not as busy as Austin. San Antonio is definitely busy. I was just there last week and agents are like, yeah, it's getting tough. Uh, Houston, Houston's competitive, not as bad as Dallas or Austin, but it's competitive. And then here's what people don't plan for. And this is where um, I try to explain this over and over and over on my channel about Texas. And this is the hugest misconception, right? No income tax, so it's cheaper. The property taxes, especially in some of these new build areas, are three to three point two percent. Wow! Um, in Austin, you can buy. You know, the average, the median price right now is in the mid five. So five fifty is the median price right now. If you bought a five fifty home in Austin, your tax rate is going to be about two point two one. So that's going to be about probably thirteen to fourteen thousand dollars a year in property taxes. Right. If you buy a four hundred thousand dollar house at that same uh, at, at a 3% tax rate, you're looking at the same price. So wow. you might be able to buy a cheaper home, but you have to pay attention to those property taxes. And that's what I don't, most people just don't pay attention to. Even when they're looking at houses, they just don't pay attention to that. No, I mean, that's a good point, right? I mean, it's crazy right here in the state of California. And, and I want to talk about property taxes because I think it's important. Um, but before we do that, you mentioned investors make up about 25% of the market or so. Yep. Now, are those investors buying property to rent them out or are they buying property with the idea that in eight months, nine months, whatever it is, the market's going to appreciate by another 20%. They're going to sell them and, and take that profit and move it into something else. Um, you know, every investor has a different motive, but I would say majority of the investors I work with are looking at a five-year plan. Got so it. they're looking to hold for five years. Obviously, I mean, it here's the misconception. Everybody thinks all this tech is coming to Austin. All this tech is coming to Austin, which it is. Tesla's not here. There we go. Tesla's not here yet, right? Employees aren't here. In fact, um, you gotta be careful about what I talk about with Tesla because I'm working on some legal things with them. Uh, secondly, um, their, uh, you know, Oracle is just now bringing their employees out. So uh, Samsung is about to announce from my inside information, which I don't know if you can take with too much grain of salt, but from my inside information, Samsung is going to build their $17 billion uh, plant wow. out here. So a lot of the stuff's still coming here and it's an attractive place to be. So a lot of these investors are buying because of Tesla. They're buying because of all these things, but those employees are not here yet. No, that, that I mean, that's a good point, right? So you've already got a lack of supply. Yep. Buyer demand is, is through the roof. And the employees that are going to run these these factories, going to work in these factories and, and what have you, and we're talking thousands of jobs here, yeah. aren't even in the city yet. So these people are going to either have to rent property, which is right. why investors are buying, or they're going to have to buy something, which continues to add that demand to an already um, anemic supply of, of inventory, which just continues to, to keep this, this thing rolling forward. Right. Um, now, you mentioned property taxes. Property taxes at at three percent, some areas two point two. What you know, yeah. between two and three percent, give or take. Right now, here in the state of California, we have something called Prop thirteen. Yeah. Right. Prop thirteen fixes property taxes based on when you purchase the property at a certain value, and it can't increase more than two percent a year. Yeah. For for life, right? Unless for whatever reason it gets repealed, and and every single time there's there's a vote in California, it's on the ballot. Right. It's content. It const comes up constantly, um, but in the state. In, in Texas, right? Um, th there's no caps, right? I mean, right. maybe I'm wrong. So you, well, you there tell is. Me. Um, okay. So, sorry, I'm trying to no, have no. my wife come get her dog. Um, no, no. Okay. So here, here's the thing about uh, the way property taxes work. If you are an investor and you purchase a property in Texas, anywhere in Texas, um, you do not get a cap on what your taxes can go up every year. So 
the, in, the, the, the rate will stay the same. In fact, those 3% rates will actually come down over time because the muds and the pids will come off. So those are just utility lights like a Melrose gotcha. in California, gotcha. right? Gotcha. Perfect. So, um, so those will come down, but those values are still going up. So even though those, those muds and pids will come off, your value is still gone up. So really it doesn't ever, the tax doesn't come down, but here's what people don't understand. So if you are able to homestead, when you homestead, what that means is that you are going to live in that property and it is your main residence. So what happens is you get a 10% uh, cap. Now you can protest those taxes every single year. And that's what I help clients with. Um, and there's companies that I kind of refer them to, to help. So you can protest the valuation of your home, um, which will potentially bring that tax down. But every single year, your tax valuation is going up because obviously um, you know, values are going up. So that tax dollar will go up over, year over year. I can say my first home, when I moved to Texas, we owned it for about four years. Our beginning tax was about 5,500 and the time frame, the time we left and that four, in that four year time frame, it went from 5,500, almost up to $8,000. Wow. Yeah. So and if you're, the- and if you're, if you're on a budget, right. And you're trying to, to plan every year, Oh, my payments just went up a hundred dollars a month. Now next year my payments, but so if your if your income is not increasing every year, don't worry because your property taxes definitely will. No, it's a good point. I mean, and and when you say that, what I think of is you know you mentioned helping your clients with with that sort of thing, right? right. That's what a professional does um, in this market, in any market rather. You know, you're there helping your clients. You're not just there helping them buy a house. You're there after. The, the, the close of escrow and you're and you're helping them probably on a yearly basis with with trying to keep those property taxes mitigated or what have you whereas the, there's a lot of people out there that just sell homes and, and probably don't even yeah might, might not even know that which is which is crazy right. um and we're but, and you know but it's the reality and he, here's here's part of the problem too there's what 13,000 realtors in Austin. I feel like you could hit a realtor with a rock if you just threw it in any direction. So you have a lot of people that are part-time realtors. You have um, people that don't do a ton of business. And, you know, I'm not telling, I'm not saying this to people to call me, but um, you really need to make sure you know who you're working with, right? What their production levels are, how they're negotiating deals, um, what they're doing to help their clients. Because, you know, on the listing side, when I see these offers come over and it's an agent I've never heard of and look at the offer price, there's one of two things happens. They just write a barely a list price offer, right? They didn't prep their client on like, Hey, you know, I should talk to the agent first to see where offers are. And then you have these agents that just write a bazillion dollars over list price. Right now, here's the craziest part about our current market. And I know California is getting into this too, is that you have to, in order to win an offer, because there's so much cash, you have to do what's called an appraisal waiver, which means that you're saying as a buyer, okay, I'm going to put my 20% down on this, but I'm going to write $150,000 over list price. And if it doesn't make appraisal, it's okay. I'll make up the difference. Right. So you could be coming up with your 20% and then, then potentially another $150,000. So if you're not prepared for that and your agent's not preparing you for that, and you're just writing this really kind of foolish offer, you could cost you a lot of money. So those are things that when you're coming over here, you really need to pay attention to and have a really good game plan. Cause I, I have clients that come out and they're like, okay, we're fully prepared. And I'm like, okay, are you, let's talk about the game plan. And then they're like, oh wow, I wasn't prepared. So that's, that's one thing that, you know, I think the misconception is, is oh, I can just go over and get a house. Um, no, yeah, I, it's and- cutthroat. It's no, it, right it, it is. And I preach on my channel about working with a professional, um, yeah. whether it's on the mortgage side, the lending side and yeah. or the real estate side. So I think you 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 help me nail that home, especially in this environment. Uh, but there's something I mean, we've we've talked about kind of the negatives. We're going to talk about some positive things yeah. here in just a moment. Sure. Uh, but it, but, you know, somebody is planning on leaving California. They're planning on selling their house, not, not even in California. Let's just say Seattle anywhere. Yeah. Right. They're planning on selling their house. They have this idea that I'm going to list my house in California. I'm going to sell it and I'm going to drive to Austin and I'm going to yeah. buy a house when I get there. Right idea, wrong idea. Should they be searching for property yeah. prior to that? I mean, what's you you talk about a game plan. Yep. Let's let's talk about some maybe initial steps in that game plan. Yeah, so that that's that's a great question because this is something that happens I see on a daily basis, right? Somebody's got to sell their home uh, and then move over. It, if you try to come over with an offer where it's a contingent on that home selling, um, 
really, unless that house is extremely overpriced and nobody's looking at it, um, it's going to be really hard to get that offer accepted. So um, I would, number one, start with having a conversation with a professional locally and figure out what what you are going to do, right? What the game plan is. Uh, does the house need to get sold first? Does, which yes, it does. It needs to get sold f- first. And you need to have that cash in hand. The second thing is what, whoever, whatever agent you engage with, um, I always strongly recommend that you take their considerations when it comes to lender referrals. Um, lender, I mean, most agents, I don't think, I mean, unless you're a big agent that has an MSA with a, with a lender, um, doesn't get any proceeds from lenders as far as like marketing dollars or anything like that. Right, so you're right. not really getting paid. Um, there's a lot of rules against that. So you're not getting paid from that lender. The reality is a, as an agent is going to create a relationship with a really good solid lender. And, and what happens is that puts you in a better position because if you've done several deals with that lender, you know their processes, you know that you're going to have a hopefully a better shot at making appraisals. And that's the biggest thing is a lo- good local lender will make sure that you have uh, good appraiser pools they're pulling from consistently, which will help you with that appraisal. So you're not having that big gap. Um, so I would make sure before you do anything, get in touch with an agent and then get in touch with a very good lender. Now, look, I have so many people like, Oh, I want to use my chase bank lender. or I want to use my local lender in California that I've used several times. I highly recommend you don't do that. I just lost a deal for $5 million because of chase bank, $5 million deal over chase bank. They totally botched it. Now I'm not saying don't use chase bank and this scenario is a big loan. So there's a lot of moving parts, but they botched it. So I would say definitely know who you're using as a lender, um, have a game plan with that agent and get that house sold. Um, and then the reality is you're going to have to Airbnb for a couple months if you haven't found a property, unless you go and get in a new build. Now, this is where things in this market have changed drastically is I would, I would typically have somebody from Seattle, California, wherever reach out and go, okay, I want to buy a home. Here's all the details. I'm like, great. Since you're going to have to sell your home in a couple months, let's find you a new build. So we'd go find a new build. We'd video it. Either they'd fly out and check out the neighborhood, say, yep, we want to do this, sign a contract. They get their house in the market a couple months later, that house would come up. Uh, ready once and we work out that marriage where you sell that house you had the funds you move straight over no right that will not happen in this market at all builders and i'm sure they're doing this in california too everything's on bid so not everything i'm actually doing a video this right. week on this but uh, a majority of builders have gone to bid so um, there's two types of bids. They're going to bid on the lot or you're bidding on a completed product, which means you're buying a new build home. It's new, but you got to pick out nothing. You didn't get to pick out oh, anything wow. in the home. Um, the other thing they're doing and Taylor Morrison's kind of the biggest, uh, one doing this, um, lot premiums eight months ago, were probably like 30 to $40,000 on a higher end home, which would be in the, you know, five to million dollar range. Right. Right. Now what they're doing is saying, Hey, the winner, you can bid on these lots. The winner of these lots then can pick out all the stuff in the home. Here's the base price of the home. It's $480,000. Originally, the lot premium would have been 30 grand. In fact, that's the starting price, but you get to bid on the lot. And then once that's done, you get to pick all the upgrades. So neighborhoods that were, you know, five fifty to six hundred thousand dollar neighborhood, maybe four to six, are now eight hundred and fifty thousand dollar neighborhoods because people are paying two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a lot. And and wow. if you think I'm kidding about that, I have clients who reach out to me all the time, like, what do you, what should we bid on the slot? I'm like, minimum 150 over, and they're like, no, we don't want to do that. Okay, well, what do we want to do? 100 thousand over? Okay, let's do 100 thousand over. And then guess what happens? Hey, sorry, you didn't win the bid, which right. is awful because you're. That the builders just raking that in. The other problem is that some of those builders are doing escalation clauses on top of that. So let's say you paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars for that lot, they're pocketing that money, right? So any anything that happens, you know, lumber costs go up. It's all padded in there. But then they're saying, hey, lumber costs went up, so we're going to go ahead and write, raise prices on you at this point, and then this other point we can raise prices on you again. So. Um, so builders are, are living life right now. Now there are some really good builders that are, that are doing some the the things the right way, but they're still having to pinch numbers to make it work obviously because of this market and built and, and lumber costs and all the commodity costs. So, um, I would have a good plan as a long winded answer, but um, no, it's good. I mean, that's what people need to know. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, you want to, I was just going to say, 
it, it's, it's discouraging for me because we used to help a lot of clients do new builds and that's, um, you know, we're, it's not that we're not helping people with new builds. We are, I mean, we'll probably close this year 40 as of right now in 2021, we'll probably close about 45 new build homes. Oh, wow. And so we do a lot of new builds. So it's just discouraging for me because the relationships we used to have with some of those builders that were great relationships that would actually benefit my client aren't as great as they used to be. I mean, we're still getting those, those clients in our contract with new builds, but it's a much different dynamic than it was before. No, and, and you made a good point there. I mean, you said discouraging, right? I, I talked yeah. about this too, is that it's discouraging as us as agents, because at one point, I mean, I've been doing this nearly 20 years. I used to be able to advise my client pretty, pretty well on, yeah. on where things would end up, what you should do to get an offer accepted, what have you. Now, I mean, you can give mm. some guidance, but people are doing things that we've never seen before. And so, you know, you know, you, you say uh, this neighborhood selling 150,000 over and then somebody comes in offers 200 and something. And you're yeah. like, you know, it's just it's discouraging for us because, you know, we we are professionals and we like to be able to guide our clients. And in this environment, it's it's hard to do. Uh, but and I, you know, it's funny is I get a lot of emails. Hey, we wrote this offer on this. Is this a good do oh, you yeah. think this I is a good that. value? And I'm like, you're not my client. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I mean, I can't give you advice on that, but, um, yeah. And, you know, look, I just had a client and I, I told the story on Instagram. I had this client that purchased a home, uh, five years ago for $180,000. Um, she ended up losing her job recently and was going to move back to Oregon. We sold her home. She made so much money, so much money selling her home. Like literally at closing, she was in tears just because it was life changing. And it's, it's, it's tough for me because I remember helping her buy that home for $180,000, what that meant for her family. And that story has changed now in 2021 because, you know, I'm helping people differently, right? They're moving out here to get away from California. Uh, right. They're moving out here because for uh, better cost of living, whatever the, the jobs. And so that story has changed a little bit. And that's what makes it kind of not as fun anymore in real estate because the joy of somebody being able to purchase that home for the first time, first time home buyers. And here's the other thing. We used to help a lot of people with FHA, down payment assistance. And you know, they're just as fun as somebody buying a five million dollar home. For sure. But for them, that's life changing. And that doesn't happen as much anymore. And that's that's kind of discouraging on, on a real estate standpoint. But there's a lot of really fun, cool stories happening, right? We're still helping a lot of people do a lot of fun stuff. And when they're like, I just helped somebody move from uh Oregon and we literally walked through a builder. I told the builder, if anything comes available, you call me immediately. I'm the first agent you call. We walked out of there 20 minutes later. He called me. He's like, Hey, this lady just canceled this contract. They got into this house. They're showing me pictures the other day of what they're doing in their backyard and stuff. I'm like, that stuff's awesome. So no, there's still a lot of really cool stuff happening. So I don't want to discourage people, but I think, um, not nobody's setting the right expectation. A lot of these agents out here really just, they need to close a deal. It's a tough market. They're trying to close a deal. They write this really crazy over list price offer. Uh, they don't do a lot of communication. That's one way, one thing we've been doing to kind of win these offers without being crazy is really having a lot better communication with that agent. With that yeah. agent, woman or exactly. Yeah. So last question before we we'll get out of the negative yeah. stuff and we'll talk yes. about some positive stuff. Cool. Um, appraisals. Yeah. How where are they coming in? I mean, I know you can't say yeah. whatever, but I mean, are most appraisals coming in short in this market with with people over quote unquote overbidding yeah. on property? Um on an on an offer, one hundred and thirty thousand over, we were about sixty short on one. Okay. On one hundred and fifty thousand over, we were about seven short, seven thousand short. Okay. So it's all hit and miss. It depends on the lender. It depends on a lot of variables. Um, but that's something that you know you need to have a conversation with your agent when you're writing that offer. Like, hey, where do you really think this is gonna come in at? Because we need to prep for that. Um, but I'm also having a ton come in at value. No, that's so. That's what um, we're seeing here in California. Yeah. And so we're seeing a lot of, I think some of these appraisers, you know, back in like 13, 14, 15, appraisers were being a little more stingy, right? We were just coming out of 08. Um, now I think appraisers are kind of understanding that this market isn't going to change. Everybody's expecting a market shift. Um, in Austin, that shift is probably way down the road if it's coming. Right. No, that's good. Um, so we, we've, we've basically crapped on 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 <laughs> at what it's like to buy a property in yeah. texas so positives like people yeah. moving to texas what i mean 
you know, all, all the good things. Like let's, let's talk about, you know, some of the, po- I mean, I've been to Austin. Austin's an awesome area. Yeah. Um, obviously in, in my opinion, you know, a lot better than, than Dallas and, and some of the <laughs> other areas out there just, you know, I actually yeah. did an Ironman there. Um, like five, five, six years ago, um, around Lake Travis and, and oh, some other cool stuff. And, uh, so positives, what, what are, you know, so, yeah, so I've, I moved from San Diego, um, to, to Austin and San Diego is a beautiful place to live. Um, you know, a lot of people think, oh, moving from California to Austin to Texas, you're not going to like it. It does have an adjustment period, right? You, you, you need to have a mindset of, to know what you're getting into. The, the beach is not right there. Um, it is a three hour drive or a five hour drive, depending on which beach you go to. And it's not as great as California, but The reality is, is that we still have beaches. There's a lot to do in Texas. The one thing that I love most about Texas is just the Texas culture. And this is something I've talked about in a lot of videos. The Texas culture is we don't care where you come from. We don't care what you do, what you vote for. We really don't care. Sit down, have a beer and let's hang out. And that is, that is what, um, and when I started getting into real estate, I was door knocking a lot and Every single time I door knock, you know, I was, I was hustling, trying to get business. Like, Hey, we got this open house coming down the street. 99.9% of the time, somebody offered me a beer. That's awesome. It door knocked 10 homes. Hey, you want to come in for a beer and hang out for a minute? You're like hammered by the, uh, the 10th house. Yeah. By the 10th house, (laughs) you've like, yeah, you've had every Texas beer possible. Uh, That's great. Um, and so the culture is really welcoming. Um, and I say this on my channel quite a bit. Look, I'm from California, right? And sometimes Californians, we have, uh, you know, this air of we're really awesome. We live in California. Right. California is awesome. If you come over to Texas with that attitude, um, it won't go well for you. And I can tell from experience, I came over like, yeah, I'm from California. I'm a Dodger fan. Like, oh, yeah, um, that didn't go well. So I quickly learned that to change that and just be like, hey, how's it going? Um, and be friendly because that's the one thing is like, if you're going to be arrogant and kind of rude to people, you'll be, they'll be rude back. The moment you're just remotely nice to someone, you will get everything in the world you need. Prime yeah. example of good client of mine actually just moved into my neighborhood, uh, moved from Inglewood and uh, moved out here. They sold their house, moved out here, business owner. And uh, the first thing he said to me about a week after moving in, I ran into him. I'm like, Hey Adam, how's it going, man? How are you doing? He's like, dude, you were not kidding when you said people out here are just so incredibly nice. I'm like, right, that's yeah, cool. yeah, it's cool. No. And you know, I mean, look, Austin, especially Austin, everything is done outdoors. So if you're going to go have a beer, it's outdoors, outdoor venues. Um, you know, everybody says the food here is really great. I will not prepare, prepare you this. If you enjoy the Mexican food in California, be prepared to be very disappointed. Um, the, the Mexican food here is not that great. Uh, I'm sorry, Texas. I love you very much, <laughs> but totally different ty- style. Um, Barbecue is fantastic. There's some really great food out here, but um, everything's outdoors. There's a lot of outdoor fun stuff. There's a lot of community events. There's a lot of community involvement. So if you want to come out here, let's say you have a family and you want to have that community feel, um, you're going to find it pretty no, easily. But- I mean, that's cool. I mean, I get exactly what you're saying, right? California is full of a bunch of knuckleheads, um, <laughs> pretentiousness. Yeah. I mean, I came from North Carolina, right? So yeah. where you would literally, I mean, rural North Carolina, where you would drive by somebody on the road and you would wave at them and you had no idea who was yeah. driving past you. It was that kind of yeah. mentality growing up. And uh, you come to California and you hold the door open for somebody and they just walk right past. Like nobody even says anything yeah. or they let the door shut in your face. I yep. mean, it's yeah, yeah, I, I get it. And, and I miss that quite frankly. I mean, I go back to, uh, to, to, you know, home in North Carolina and it's, it's a completely different environment, a lot slower pace, yeah. which, you know, it is, you know, if you're used to California, you're like, what, what are these people doing? That, it's and, so and, slow. Yeah, the slower pace thing got me at first because, you know, I was, I'm from, coming from San Diego. San Diego is pretty busy. It's not as busy as LA, but definitely a busy moving city. And I got here. Yeah. The traffic can be bad, but like, as far as like, like snappiness, it was like, whoa, okay, I need to slow down. Now I understand why everybody wears boots. They don't need to run as fast. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, too funny. Yeah. Uh, so somebody's thinking moving to, uh, you know, to, 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 to Texas, to Austin, um, you know, obviously more specifically you're, you're in Austin. Um, how do they contact you? I mean, we'll put, we'll put the stuff in, in the yeah. description below if they want to reach out to you directly, but you know, any, anything you want to add, um, you know, yeah, I, I, 
Yeah, thanks. So I would say if you want to reach out to me, you can absolutely. My uh, All my information will be below uh, my website and all that jazz. Um, you can just YouTube my name, Jeremy Knight. It'll pop up pretty quickly because we have a pretty uh, uh, substantial YouTube presence. But um, I would say anybody that's looking to come out, definitely do your due diligence. Look at the market. Get in touch with somebody. You can get in touch with me. Get in touch with anybody that you feel is going to be a good realtor that's going to help support you and has your best interests at heart. I think that's the biggest key I would give you there that really wants to what I usually say, my number one job is not to sell you a home. My number one job is to protect you, and that's what we're going to do first. No, um, so um, so look for somebody that's going to take care of you and, you know, have fun. And it's going to be a stressful process moving. I've done it. I've moved from San Diego to here. It's going to be stressful. But once you get here, it's going to be like, oh, this place is pretty sweet. No, that's cool, man. I, again, like I said. Unless you I, go to Houston, then. <laughs> uh, too good. <laughs> we, won't, we won't go there in this yeah. video. We, uh, uh, we, we rag on Houston quite a bit on my channel. So it's uh, it's a love hate. I, uh, you know, being a Dodger fan and getting cheated out of a World Series is uh it's, it's never going to go away. You, you definitely did on that front. I'm not a Dodger fan, but uh, yeah. you, you definitely lost to uh, to yeah. the cheaters in in that one. Yeah. Um, cool. So um, we'll we'll put Jeremy's information in in the description below. How to get a hold of him? Go check out his channel. Um, as always, guys, I appreciate you being here. Um, appreciate your time. Have a great day. Talk to you soon. Awesome. Thanks.